Hola, científicos. Happy Friday. Have you had a great week? That's great. Me too. I really enjoyed our scientist interview yesterday. I really like that Isaiah is a scientist that helps take care of animals and helps other people. I really appreciate the work that he and the other scientists do for our San Francisco community. He taught us a bit about the frog habitat that he restored, and it reminds me that we need to finish observing some of our San Francisco habitats. So, based on our subtitles that we wrote ahead of time, we still have to study oak woodlands and the Pacific Ocean, specifically by the Farallon Islands. Do you have your notebooks ready for note taking? All right, take a moment to go get it. I'll reread our notes from yesterday while you get your notebook. So we have plant habitats. Sand dunes, plants have waxy leaves or are succulents. Animals can camouflage in the sand. And then in the wetlands, they have fresh water and salt water and lots of grass. All right, now I remember. So, muy bien. Let's observe the photo that we have of oak woodlands in the Golden Gate Park. What do you notice? Mm-hmm. There are a lot of trees, and those are oak trees, and it does look a bit dry. Apparently, these oak trees are called coast live oaks, and they actually provide food for many birds and squirrels. Hmm. We should actually stop to write that note. Let me think. They have, ah, they have coast live oaks, which makes food for animals. What do you think of that sentence? <sighs> I'm glad you like it. Let's copy it down. They have coast live oak, which provide food for animals. Okay. You know what else was interesting? Last year, together, we learned about the Ohlone people, and they're the indigenous people that have been living here for a long time. Well, they used to use these oak trees for a lot of things, like making bowls, dyes, and even using some parts of the tree for stomach issues. Wow, oak trees sound really important for meeting the needs of living things. Let's write that note down. Ohlone people use them to meet their needs, yeah? <sighs> Wow, these trees are essential to a lot of lives. I'm glad that they're protected in the Golden Gate Park. Well, we should move on to our final habitat. We also need to review all of our learning. So vamos, let's observe this image of the Farallon Islands, which are in the Pacific Ocean. Did you notice that the islands don't have any human habitats? I thought that was interesting. It makes me think that it's not a place that would meet our needs. <laughs> Apparently though, these islands have one of the biggest populations of great white sharks. Ooh, how scary! But they stay around here because there are 36 different kinds of marine mammals that live there, including their favorite ones, seals and sea lions. It seems like the sharks can always find food here. Oh, we should note that Cientificos. Sharks get plenty of food here. And we're going to make it blue for the Pacific Ocean. So, I also read that the waters by the islands contain a lot of nutrients. So the islands also get a lot of birds and many underwater creatures. Shrimp, krill, turtles, and whales can be found all over these islands. This habitat sounds very rich and healthy. Maybe we could know many animals live there because of the water? Okay. Wow. So we learned a lot. We just we learned a lot with our notes, but let's reread them to make sure we review our learning and see if we can answer our question. So today we added oak woodlands. They have coast live oak, which provide food for animals. Ohlone people use them to meet their needs. 
Sharks get plenty of food here. Oh, we moved on to Pacific Ocean. Sorry, scientists. Many animals live there because of the water. Okay, so what do you think, scientists? How do these notes from our work from Monday, Tuesday, and Thursday help us? How do habitats help living things meet their needs? Yes, many of the animals were able to eat other animals or plants in their habitats, uh-huh. They were able to get water from that. We saw that in the wetlands and the islands, mm-hmm. Muy bien, some were able to use defenses based on colors. Yes, and they were able to get clean air where they lived too. But what happens when your habitat doesn't meet your needs? Think of the monarchs. Eso, yes, that. You can move to a new habitat or migrate. Hmm, what else can you do? Think about our interview with the scientist Isaiah. Yes, the habitat can be modified or if they need it, they can be restored. Oh, it sounds like we have made conclusions. Let's write it down. We need to write today's date, page number, and our title, Habitat Conclusion. Let's get started. I don't think that's it's the 26th. Oh, I could just close it. February 26th, 2021. All right, bueno, <laughs> let's answer our question. So we said habitats provide living things with food, water, air, and sometimes defenses. Let's write that. Habitats provide for living things with air, water, food, and sometimes defenses. Great job. And if they don't, living things can migrate to a new habitat or change their habitats. We should write that conclusion too. All right, scientists, did you realize that everything we learned this month about living things set us up for this conclusion? Ah, some of you did make that connection. At the beginning of the month, we learned about living and non-living things. And then we learned about their needs and how they meet them. After that, we learned about how they survive and protect those needs by using defenses. This all led to our learning this week about habitats. Habitats need to make sure that all those needs are present. That way, living things can survive and thrive. Thrive means to grow or develop well, or to have a good life. Even though we are finished studying this together, it doesn't mean that your learning has to end here. I want to ask you one more question before we close out. What do us, us humans need to do to survive and thrive? It's okay if you don't know quite yet, but I want you to think about it. Scientificos, I hope you enjoy the rest of the show and have a wonderful weekend. Nos vemos el lunes. See you Monday.